Good afternoon, it's almost 5.25pm. I could have listened to a mass now, I've been listening to quite a lot. And um, I've thought, no, I'd better do the recordings now. And uh, I'm pleased to say that Rosie's home for one night and then back to the hospital tomorrow. I'm sure they need the beds, that's why they do that. Um, but she's... She's okay for the time being, but she's got to have lots of scans and tests and treatments. So I'm praying for her. Um, I'm going to be doing the reading mass readings for today, which I will open in a moment. Before that, I'm going to um, just do the prayers I normally do before reading Holy Scripture. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. And we pray for the faithful departed, particularly all the soldiers who are dying in Ukraine and Russia and elsewhere where there may be war. And we pray for the sick. Eternal rest grant to them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. And I pray for the repose of the soul of Father Jeremy Davis, who I only learned from the Mass in, in Walsingham today, that he died 5th of November last year, which would be 2022. I knew him many years ago, a wonderful, holy, quiet, gentle priest. I think he's about 10 years older than me, so that would make him about 87. A very, very humble man. So I ask you all to pray for the repose of his soul. I was very upset when I learned online that he died. I did not find out uh, until today. But I've rung a priest friend and he's going to say a mass for him. So, a prayer of entrustment. Dear and loving Mother Mary, keep your hand upon me this day. Guard my mind, my heart and my senses, that I may not commit sin. Make my thoughts, affections, words and actions holy, so that I may be pleasing to you and to your divine Son Jesus, and attain heaven with you. Jesus and Mary, give me your blessing, your holy blessing, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And it's wonderful to see a bishop and so many people there in the rain, pro-life, which is what I am interested in as well. So we pray that they had a wonderful time at that Mass and that they prayed and that all their prayers will be answered. Um, for the pro-life movement is against euthanasia and abortion. And actually, um, Father Jeremy Davis, before he became a priest, he was an obstetrician. Yes, he was an obstetrician and he became a Catholic priest when he was about 39 years old. So we are very, very special that he started and began this pro-life mass that they held today. I think he started it maybe 20 years ago and it's still going, which is wonderful. So I'm just looking for the prayer. I haven't marked it up. Before reading sacred scripture, Open my heart, O Holy Spirit, to receive your inspired word. Grant me wisdom to understand what you want to teach me and strength of will to follow wherever you lead. Amen. I've typed up more prayers, so um, hopefully I'll use some at the end of this reading because um, I don't know that the readings are that long. They didn't sound long when they were being read 
at Walsingham, but you can't always tell. I'm getting to the end of this folder now. It's nearly full up with all the readings. Okay. Yes, Saturday the 5th of August, the first reading is in the 17th week of Ordinary Time and of course the dedication of the Basilica of St Mary Major would have been an optional memorial. <coughs> Sorry, this <coughs> chest and throat stopped me going out in the rain. I wouldn't go out today at all. I had hoped to go to the Latin Mass but no way in the rain I can't I can't cope with the wet weather. It doesn't like me when I'm waiting at bus stops for buses. <laughs> so the read the first reading is from the book of Leviticus twenty five verses one to eight and seventeen and the theme In the year of Jubilee each of you is to return to his ancestral home. The Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai. He said, You are to count seven weeks of years, seven times seven years, that is to say, a period of seven weeks of years for 49 years. And on the tenth day of the seventh month, you shall sound the trumpet. On the day of atonement, you shall sound the trumpet throughout the land. You will declare this 50th year sacred and proclaim the liberation of all the inhabitants of the land. This is to be a jubilee for you. Each of you will return to his ancestral home, each to his own clan. This 50th year is to be a jubilee year for you. You will not sow, you will not harvest the ungathered corn. You will not gather from the untrimmed vine. The jubilee is to be a holy thing to you. You will eat what comes from the fields. In this year of jubilee, each of you is to return to his ancestral home. If you buy or sell with your neighbour, let no one wrong his brother. If you buy from your neighbour, you must take into account the number of years since the Jubilee. According to the number of productive years, he will fix the price. The greater the number of years, the higher shall be the price demanded. The less the number of years, the greater the reduction. For what he is selling you is a certain number of harvests. Let none of you wrong his neighbour, but fear your God. I am the Lord your God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 66 and your response. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O God, be gracious and bless us, and let your face shed its light upon us. So will your ways be known upon earth, 
and all nations learn your saving help. Response Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and exult, for you rule the world with justice. With fairness you rule the peoples. You guide the nations on earth. Response. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its fruit for God. Our God has blessed us. May God still give us his blessing till the ends of the earth revere him. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The Gospel Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are those who with a noble and generous heart take the word of God to themselves and yield a harvest through their perseverance. Alleluia. Or, Alleluia, Alleluia. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. The Gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. And the theme, Herod sent and had John beheaded. John's disciples went off to tell Jesus. The reading from Matthew is Matthew 14, verses 1 to 12. Herod, the Tetrarch, heard about the reputation of Jesus and said to his court, This is John the Baptist himself. He has risen from the dead, and that is why. Miraculous powers are at work in him. Now it was Herod who had arrested John, chained him up and put him in prison because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. For John had told him, It is against the law for you to have her. He had wanted to kill him but was afraid of the people who regarded John as a prophet. Then, during the celebrations for Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias danced before the company and so delighted Herod that he promised on oath to give her anything she asked. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me John the Baptist's head here on a dish. The king was distressed, but thinking of the oaths he had sworn and of his guests, he ordered it to be given her and sent and had John beheaded in the prison. The head was brought on a dish and given to the girl who took it to her mother. John's disciples came and took the body and buried it. Then they went off to tell Jesus the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's a pity people don't believe in God much now because with that first reading, it shows us that God himself cared about the climate and the weather and the land and the earth because of all the laws that he gave them, because of the jubilee and the seven years and then rest the land for a year and all those things that he instructed. So if they think this is a modern phenomena, climate change and all this stuff that they keep promoting... 
They, they have no knowledge of God. God. God himself cares about his creation. He cares about the earth. He's done it forever. And if we'd stuck to his laws and rules and things, we wouldn't be in the situation we're in now because they c control the weather with all this poison they take up in airplanes and, and control and make it rain and make it snow, make it this because of the world war where they lost through bad weather and stuff like that but the Americans are in, in control of poisoning the whole world and we allow it we should have laws that forbid them to go up in planes poisoning the earth any, anywhere and everywhere particularly in England, Great Britain we don't want it but we've got it that's why we have this weird weather the rain that we have now is not the rain that I experienced as a child and neither is the winter and neither is the summer. None of it is how it should be. You do not see the weather that we saw 70 years ago. I'm just telling you, we don't. The weather's odd. should let God just control it. But he'll let us kill ourselves. You give, a, give us enough rope, we'll have, hang all ourselves. Anyway, I must get back to looking at the, the, the reading. <laughs> So today's first reading, because I love Leviticus, from the book of Leviticus, ends with the call. Let none of you wrong his neighbour, but fear your God. And what are we doing? We're wronging our neighbours. And none, none of the people fear God. I personally do fear God for my sins, but anything else? So that... Fear that has, has to be understood as reverence for God. Who reverences God now? They don't even want to know him. But we Christians, we should be showing our reverence for God by respecting our neighbour, by treating them fairly and justly. And in the Gospel reading, Herod shows no respect for John the Baptist doing him great wrong, treating him unjustly. Herod had thrown John into prison at the insistence of his wife, who he was in bigamy with her because she was still married to his brother. It was a bigamous marriage, Herodias, because he had told Herod he told him personally, John the Baptist, didn't. he wasn't going to be messed about. It was against the Jewish law to marry her during a celebration of Herod's birthday as a result of rash promises he made to his stepdaughter, who he probably had a, a deep lust for. Well, it was portrayed like that in the film, <laughs> the film of the story. <laughs> he felt pressured by his wife. And his stepdaughter obviously obeyed her mother to have John the Baptist beheaded. Herod, Herodias and her daughter are often referred to as an unholy trinity in this story. Well, they colluded. I mean, the girl was young and beautiful and danced to, to, till she mesmerised the king. And the wife could guess that he had this lust and desire for her. So he used the, she used the girl to get what she wanted. And the victim was blessed John the Baptist. So one person can do great evil, but the greater evil often spring from several people working together as they did in that tri tri triology or three, three of them. As all three cooperated in John's death, thereby showing that they had no fear of God, no reverence to God, no respect for God's prophet. The way Herod, Herodias and her daughter worked together to bring about a great wrong is the antithesis of our calling to work together to bring about a great good. The Lord calls us to work together in the service of the coming of the kingdom of God. There's no doubt it's going to come. And we should be doing our best in our own little ways to save souls and direct their steps to God before it's too late. The Lord wants to work through each one of us, you and me and all the people you know. 
individually, but he can work much more powerfully through us as a community of faith and love. So if you're boring in your church and unwelcoming, how are you going to bring new people to the Lord? What if somebody just comes because they love their family member and they've never been before? We have to show them Christ's love, all visitors, all strangers. We have been gifted by the Holy Spirit in a different way. It is when we work together in the Spirit of God that the Lord can work most effectively to overcome the forces of evil, which are real and they're strong, in our world that are so clearly on display in today's Gospel reading. The fact of the matter is there's more sin in the world than there ever was. Also, this media that I'm on, YouTube, I don't only watch Christian things and sometimes I want some information and uh, I, I can select certain, certain things. And I do, like all of us do, but I'm not addicted to it in any shape or form. And uh, it has a power of force for evil, but at the moment, we have to keep praying that we don't get persecuted for what we do because we are reaching people that we couldn't normally reach. So that is a good thing, that people can hear the word of God, hear and see the masses and learn the truth about certain things. But you have to not be addicted to it. You, you, you must limit your time on, on YouTube. Uh, and, and uh, what you watch on YouTube because not all of it is good and also limit your children from it just allow them certain things and you need to be in control yes um, we have to thank God for everything in our lives and I've done some more typing up of prayers since yesterday and uh, if I go towards the back of this folder, um, I'm going to, I've just actually opened it, a, a page. It's interesting. It says Invocations of the Holy Spirit. So I haven't, I don't believe that I have read this, but I will record everything that's in here one day. Maybe I'm just recording whatever's in this folder. <laughs> but that'll take a while, I think. Because I'm, I don't know what page I'm on, but I'm certainly more than three quarters through the book. So the, what I'm going to read is called Invocations to the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Spirit of faith, help us overcome the difficulties and trials of life. Spirit of truth. Give us delight in every word that comes from the mouth of God. Spirit of light, illumine the darkness. Spirit of fidelity, make us faithful witnesses of your love. Spirit of piety, pray in us with a longing that cannot be expressed in words. Spirit of life, live in us with your life of grace and love. Spirit of newness, reawaken in us daily a new heart and a new spirit. Spirit of fruitfulness, Produce in us living waters flowing out to all who thirst. Spirit of adoption, renew in us the awareness that we are all children of God. Spirit of holiness, fashion and protect in us the image of the Son, so that we may become as the Father has predestined us. Spirit of power, conquer through strength and mildness, 
every obstacle to grace, both within and without. Spirit of glory, draw everyone together, that we may be one with you, with the Father and the Son, united forever in the kingdom of eternal love. Amen. I didn't type an amen, but I put one there. The next one is uh, the beginning of part two. I, that's the end of what I typed up, and I obviously, I never finish reading all of those prayers. I happen just to open it there. Isn't that strange? And that's from page uh, uh, 141 in, in my prayer book, this prayer book. This prayer book you can get from Pauline Media, Holy Spirit Prayer Books. The prayers are taken from, the majority are taken from that, which I use every day, but I don't use them online every day because some of the fonts are very small and I might not be able to read them correctly. So the next is in part two of this prayer book, and they're all Holy Spirit usually. But this one is from the beginning of the book, actually. And invocations, this is for older people, but who knows, people die young. Invocations for a holy death. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, I give you my heart and my soul. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, assist me in the hour of my death. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, let me die in peace with you. Amen. Now I'm going to go to morning prayers because it's the one straight after. But it's okay you can, to do them any time, I suppose. Morning prayer can be a time to give praise and thanks to God. To remind ourselves that God is the source of all good things lifting our hearts and minds to God in the early hours of the day can help us put our life into perspective. God is our loving creator who has our best interests at heart. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will ever be ever on my lips. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forevermore. Amen. A reading from Psalm 57, and they've got a little title, O God, your loving kindness endures forever. Be gracious to me, O God, be gracious to me, for my soul takes refuge in you. Indeed, I take refuge in the shelter of your wings until the storms of destruction have passed. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing hymns and psalms. Awake, my soul. Awake, Lyra and harp, that I may awake the dawn. Lord, I will praise you among the peoples, sing psalms to you among the nations. For you, your loving kindness is so great that it reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the skies. O oh God, be exalted above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from Psalm 104, and the title, Glory and Praise to You, O Lord, Forever. Bless the Lord my soul, Lord my God, how great you are. You are robed in splendour and majesty, clothed in light as a cloak. You spread out the heavens like a tent. 
Set the timbers for your lodgings on the waters. Make the clouds your chariots. And you ride on the wings of the wind. You establish the winds as messengers. Flames of fire as your ministers. You fixed the foundations of the earth so it shall not be moved for an eternity of eternities. I will sing of the Lord as long as I live, sing psalms to my God while I still have life. May this meditation of mine be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, my soul. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from Psalm 111, and the title, Great are your works, O Lord. Alleluia! I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart at the meeting of the upright and in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, pondered by all who delight in them. All his work is full of splendour and majesty. His righteousness endures for ever. He has made a memorial of his wonderful works. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him, mindful of his covenant forever. His name is holy and awe-inspiring. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who practice it have good understanding. His praise endures forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The next section is a little bit different, but it's interesting. And so I will read it and share it. The Word of God. The Holy Spirit, present in our soul, leads us, enlightens us, and prays in us. The Spirit also helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should. Instead, the Spirit pleads for us with inexpressible expressible groanings, and the one who is able to see what is in the heart knows what the Spirit wishes, because the Spirit intercedes for all the saints in accordance with God's will. Now we know that God works in every way for the good with those who love God and are called in accordance with his plan. That's Romans 8, 26 to 28. Come Holy Spirit, reveal to me the truth about God. From prayer... We draw the strength needed to meet the challenges of daily life. As committed followers of Jesus Christ, and as such to be living signs of the Lord's loving presence in the world. Intercessions. Giver of all grace, we thank and praise you for the gift of a new day. With confidence we turn to you and pray, and your response to these will be, Lord, send us your Spirit. Lord, send us your Spirit. Enliven our hearts with the Spirit's gifts of courage, love and self-control. Lord, send us your Spirit. Direct our minds and hearts to the working of your Holy Spirit in our lives. Lord, send us your Spirit. Strengthen our faith and encourage us in times of trial and hardship. Lord, send us your Spirit. 
Help us to recognise your presence in one another and those around us. Lord, send us your spirit. Bless our efforts as we strive for mutual understanding, respect and love within our family. Lord, send us your spirit. Sustain and nourish us in our life commitment and vocations. Lord, send us your spirit. Preserve our young people from the lure of drugs, alcohol, gangs and violence. Lord, send us your spirit. Help us to act with kindness toward the stranger, the lonely and the grieving. Lord, send us your spirit. Welcome all the faithful departed, especially Father Jeremy Davis, who I'm praying for today, into the light of your presence. Lord, send us your spirit. And then you can add your own intentions right now and pray, Lord, send us your spirit. And we can conclude by praying to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. And it says the closing prayer. Lord, pour into our hearts the Holy Spirit that we may proclaim the praises of your love and seek to serve you alone. Grant this through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord and give thanks. I'll end that there because it's got morning prayers and other things following that and we've just done some so I don't need to do that again. But I will look in here and pray the one prayer that I didn't do after reading sacred scripture. It is typed up but I'm still using the book. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the word you have spoken to me through the treasure of the scripture. Make these words a living reality in my life, a constant guide, a lamp for my feet, and a light to my path. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, guide us, work in us with your gifts, so that your presence may be shown, and we may serve in different ways. For the good of all. Amen. Spirit of the living God, you alone search out everything, even the depths of God's intentions. Remain with us always, that we may know all that God has freely bestowed on us, that we may rightly judge and value all things. Amen. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may put to death all sinful thoughts and actions. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may live as God's child. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may be free from slavery to sin. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may cry, pray and cry out, Abba, Father. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may possess the inheritance of grace that awaits me. Come, Spirit of Truth, and lead us to the whole truth. Speak to us of Jesus, so that we may speak of him to others. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, and help us in our weakness, 
for we do not know how to pray as we should. Intercede for us so that the one who sees into our hearts and knows our thoughts may hear our prayers. Amen. Glorious Father, give us the Holy Spirit to make us wise so that we may come to know you. Enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know the hope to which you have called us, the rich blessings you have promised and how great is your power at work in those who believe. Amen. Fill us with knowledge of your Lord God. Fill us with knowledge of your will. Through the wisdom and spiritual understanding, your spirit bestows on your faithful ones, so that we may conduct ourselves in a worthy manner, be fruitful in every type of work, and do always what is pleasing to you. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much for listening. I'm sending you God's peace in abundance. And may you always be happy and joyful in the Lord. We might have all sorts of things wrong that we can't do anything about, but there's nothing stopping us being joyful because heaven is our home and that's where we're all going to meet up. So if we're in brokenness now, we can look forward to being whole then because that's why we want to go to heaven. God bless and thank you for listening and sharing. Thanks for your comments. You're really very kind. Much appreciated. And I must say that um, the lives of the saints, the one that I love the most <laughs> so far, was the um, 27th of July. And I did it three times. Once the first shock where I read it. And then I... I did it again in the Sunday Mass because I liked it so much. And then I did it a third time because I did it on its own when, with knowing what I was going to be reading. The first time I read it, I hadn't got a clue. But it amused this priest. I think he looked at it with a friend. I think they all had a good laugh. It was called, what was it? Um, the Seven Sleepers from Ephesus. So I hope I find some more like that. I shall hope to record, but I've had a glance. It, there won't be anything. Um, it'll be Major Mary um, today and one or two. There's not many saints on today's date, but I will try and do them after I've uploaded this. But I do need to go and see my Rosie, my neighbour. She needs a cup of tea. Her daughter's there for the moment, but she, she's she got a family, so I have no idea what time she's leaving and going, but I don't suppose she'll go too early. God bless you all. Have a holy, happy weekend. I'll be doing the Mass readings as well this evening, hopefully. Bye-bye.